of sentimental verse. Nothing in my purse. Ladies and gentlemen, he really was the entertainer of the century. He's Bob Hope, and our next guest has written a book all about it. Richard Zoglin uh, joins us now, formerly of Time Magazine. He's a contributing editor and theater critic to Time Magazine. And the book is called Hope Entertainer of the Year. Richard Zoglin, welcome back to Big 550 KTRS. Great to be with you. That's Hope Entertainer of the Century. Oh, Let's sorry. give him his due. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. He died in 2003, yeah. so 11 years ago. He died at the age of 100. Right. Um, did it take you seven years to sort of do all the research for the book? Well, uh, not quite that long. I didn't start until a few years after his death, but... Uh, he, uh, it did take me about five years to do it. It was a big job. A guy who lives 100 years and is successful in every single uh, field of pop entertainment, he kind of uh, defines the century of, of entertainment from vaudeville to Broadway to radio, television, and movies. You, th there's a long line of women who uh, you detail in the book, and he, he seems like he was one of the few entertainers who was able to keep all of his women quiet and out in public, had his wife of 69 years. Yeah, well, he was, uh, he played around. It was pretty much an open secret. It was a time when uh, I think journalists, entertainment journalists, uh, kind of had an unspoken agreement to look the other way. So he was able to get away with it. But, uh, yeah, there was a lot of women in his life, and I think his his wife sort of, uh, you know, accepted it. And, in fact, they they stayed together for all those years, and they were they were quite close, if, if you know, otherwise. <laughs> the, 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 the women you detail in the book, it seems like a large number of them had a tragic end to their own life. Yeah, they died so young, many well, of them. Well, there were a few. It was just, it was a, maybe an odd thing. I don't know if you could, but, uh, you know, a couple of them uh, had died later of drug overdoses. One committed suicide. It was... Uh, uh, but, you know, I think that's just a, an uh, indication of the kind of women who maybe glom on to uh, a Hollywood star, you know, and, and to, for a fling. Maybe they're not the most stable to begin with. Yeah. He, he had flings with those girls, but not flings with his co-stars. No, pretty much not. There was one exception. Marilyn Maxwell was a co-star of his in movies in the late 40s, early 50s. Uh, and he did have a pretty open affair with her for a few years. Uh, but mostly they were lesser lesser lights, chorus girl types, and uh, just people he would meet along the way. Uh, and, you know, he kept it pretty quiet. But I think all the big, the girls took to Vietnam, the Raquel Welches and Jill St. John and those, those kind of women, no, I think he stayed away from them. How did, you know, since he lived to be 100, I think he was kind of like the originator of reinventing himself from vaudeville to acting, comedy, USO. How did he continue to stay so popular for decades? Well, you know, he was a guy who he totally focused on his career. He was just the smartest. He, he spent all of his time thinking about his career, I think at the expense to some degree of his personal life. But he was just, he, he grew up in vaudeville where and spent a lot of time in vaudeville. He didn't make it immediately. He, he really had to work for everything. And I think that just made him very resourceful and smart and, and innovative. He saw what he needed to do to succeed. And he was very forward thinking. When, a, you know, when radio come, came along, he jumped into radio. When TV came along, he was the first big Hollywood star to do TV. At that time, the studios were so afraid of television. They didn't want their stars getting near that medium because that was going to take away the, the movie audience. But Bob said, you know, an audience is an audience. He, he did both movies and TV and no other star. He was a top box office star and a top television star at the same time. You can't say that about anybody else. Yeah. Richard Zoglin, our guest, he has written a book, Hope Entertainer of the Century. What was his relationship like with Johnny Carson? Well, that's an interesting relationship. If, if you remember, uh, Johnny used to have Bob on as a guest all the time. Basically, every time Bob had a NBC special, he would come on the show to promote it. And he would come out to thanks for the memory, and he would tell jokes and so forth, and he would show clips. Um, Johnny really didn't enjoy having Bob on the show. I think he felt a little resentful of Bob because Bob was the one NBC star who was bigger than Johnny Carson. And Bob could kind of dictate when he went on the show. When, he, when Bob called and said, I want to be on the show, they had to have him on the show. The other thing about Bob was he would come on with, with jokes that his uh, writers would, had written for him, and Johnny, you know, was used to got people who would actually have conversations. I mean, maybe they would throw in right. funny jokes, but it just Bob was too prepared, and so Bob, uh, 
Johnny felt he couldn't have a real conversation with Bob. Huh, really interesting. Yeah. Now, one of the things, uh, Richard, in your book, Hope, Entertainer of the Century, that stuck out at me like a sore thumb was Sherwood Schwartz was one of his writers? Yeah, a lot of interesting people were writers for Bob Hope. Sherwood Schwartz, the creator of Gilligan's Island and the Brady Bunch, <laughs> right. in his early in his, career, in, a, in his career was a writer for Bob Hope. And uh, was like the youngest writer on the staff. He would the one, be the one who had to go out and get ice cream for him. <laughs> but uh, oh, Sherwood loved him. And I talked to Sherwood Schwartz just bef- uh, a couple years before he died. Uh, at He was 95 or something. And uh, a fascinating guy. And loved working for Bob Hope. A- a- about- any other great writers, that, that, that names that stood yeah, out? Yeah, well, Larry Gelbart, who created MASH, was a writer for yeah. Bob Hope in the late 40s. And, uh, you know... Quite a few other people you might not know because they spent their whole lives, a lot of them, writing for Bob Hope. And they, they, he was exclusive, you know, they were exclusive to him, and uh, they didn't do a lot of other things. And I think Bob Hope, I think Bing Crosby, seeing all those old movies with them together, were they truly friends? Uh, well, they were not that close. They, they had the greatest, that was the greatest team in movie history, I believe. And uh, they, they, you know, had a great rapport together on screen. Off screen, they were very different people. Bob was uh, kind of outgoing and social and loved being a star, loved talking to fans, just loved being out there. Bing was a little more reclusive, uh, kind of a cold guy, difficult to get to know. He, he didn't like the Hollywood scene. He moved away halfway through his career. He moved up to Northern California. So... I just don't think that they were that compatible uh, personally. Well, how much uh, how much Ronald Reagan is in the the book? There is certainly some Ronald Reagan. They were, uh, Bob and Ron, Ronald Reagan were not close friends, um, but of course they knew each other well and they had similar conservative political views. Bob was actually closer to Richard Nixon during the Vietnam years. Uh, they got very close, and uh, Nixon actually you know would bring Bob into the White House to tried to explain why he was bombing North Vietnam and and uh, uh, and expect Bob to go out and kind of help sell his uh, Nixon's policies to the country, which made Bob a controversial figure. Of yeah, course. Uh, the book is called Hope, Entertainer of the Century. Richard Zoglin, our guest for another minute or two. Um, he was he wasn't the king of one liners, but he had a lot of one liners. Yeah, well, I think he he nobody could deliver a line better than Bob Hope. And he did not write his own material, and that's why a lot of contemporary comedians just don't think that much of Bob Hope, because they, most current comedians, write their own stuff. Their their comedy is sort of an expression of themselves and their political views and right. whatever. Bob was not that way. He was, he wrote, he had writers who gave him material. But Bob invented the topical monologue, uh, the idea that a comedian could make jokes about the news and what was happening in his own life. Comedians before Bob Hope were not doing that. They were doing more old-fashioned vaudeville material. So Bob really set the mo- the standard for that kind of um, comedy. So, so you don't get Seinfeld unless Bob Hope shows up. I think not. Jerry Seinfeld would not admit it, but uh, uh, you know Bob Hope was, I think, the inventor of modern stand-up comedy. Richard Zoglin, our guest, he's a New York Times, uh, excuse me, Time Magazine theater critic, yeah. uh, contributing editor, has uh, spent five years writing the book Hope. Entertainer of the Century, Bob Hope, Entertainer of the Century. Uh, Richard, thanks for coming in. Good luck with the book. Thanks a lot. Great to see you. You got it. Seven fifty-eight. Really interesting stuff. Yeah, I'd like to read that. Yeah, book. Bob Hope was an interesting cat. Yeah. Seven fifty-eight here. Big.